Well, the new series Extraordinary on Hulu takes the concept of superpowers and removes the heroes and villains aiming for quirky comedy about a 20-something's desire for significance and love. Did the offbeat mashup of comedy and superheroes with a touch of drama connect with this longtime comic book fan? Stick around and I'll share my thoughts. I'm Peter Franson from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blade Productions. This is my uncut review of the series premiere for Extraordinary, episodes one and two. The synopsis the synopsis for the series on IMDb reads, Jen, a young, self-aware woman who lives in a world where everyone has a superpower except her. That's not actually a, a complete sentence, I don't think. Episode 1 synopsis, lacking a superpower, Jen resolves to find it herself following a series of humiliating incidents. And episode 2, the gang try to draw out Jen's power by inducing stress. Uh... Jizz Lord transforms at a timely moment. I didn't know anybody had that name. Okay, anyway, um... What is this animal? What's the basic feel? Uh, it's mostly leaning into quirky comedy that has characters behaving in a steady state of ridiculousness that I um, quickly became numb to. The comedy is also largely crass and sexual in its nature. It's not that I was all upset and finger-wagging as I watched, I was just extremely bored. Sex jokes get laughs largely because they are bringing up things that are considered social taboos and are therefore uncomfortable as a topic. In our sex-obsessed and over-stimulated culture, it strikes me as ironic and sad that this kind of humor still stands, uh, or, and st or excuse me, still lands among uh, adults that have left high school locker rooms behind them. Uh, as a Christian, I actually think sex is far more valuable and significant, um, and also a topic that doesn't need to be an awkward taboo in the appropriate circumstances. So I was just bored at how many times they leaned into a style of humor indicative of sadly common, immature, and dysfunctional views of sex and its, uh, and its role in our lives. Uh, the non-sexual jokes also didn't land for me because I didn't feel like there were peaks and valleys in the silliness of the characters, just one steady volume, um, which made me always feel a few seconds ahead of every punchline and a few seconds ahead of every character choice. Humor needs to surprise to work, and the jokes just all felt very unsurprising to me. There was a touch of drama at the end of the first episode that I found really moving, and it does make me wish that the show leaned mostly into drama and just used comedy here and there, but based on the second episode, which had no comparable dramatic element, that does not seem to be where this show is going. As far as the cast, performances are all fine, but again, they stay at a single volume of ridiculousness. That could have a lot to do with direction, I don't know. One character, one performer in particular, I found very unconvincing, especially in a scene where he was scrambling to take his shirt off and struggling for comedic effect, but I could almost see him intentionally failing to grab the parts of his shirt that would be necessary to remove it, and it just took me out of the experience. It's like, nobody has this much trouble taking his shirt off. I'm just, I'm just not buying this. Um... Let's see, I gotta wrap this up and have lunch. Not that I want to talk about this much longer anyway. Uh, as you might expect from a comedy involving visual effects, they are far below convincing. But I, I really wish comedies with sci-fi and fantasy settings would commit the resources that serious fantasy and sci-fi does, you know, to their effects and accomplishing them. I actually think that the comedy might land better if I could feel like the world is a little more real. And then you have that surprise factor. It feels like we're in a real world. And yet, characters are behaving such and such way, you know, so I think that would actually aid the comedy. Um, but, you know, most comedies are not going to uh, spend their budget there, or have the budget for it. Okay, as far as themes, is there anything of moral, philosophical, or spiritual significance going on in the themes of this thing that might trigger some worthwhile thought and conversation? The main character longs to be special and significant, which is a common longing for many of us, but she believes that uh, acquiring a superpower Having a special ability is what's going to do that for her. Being capable of doing great things is what's going to make her special. It's, it's possible the series will eventually have the message that what we can do does not make us special and valuable, um, but rather just who we are is, is, signif is, uh, is uh, sufficient. Um, I think it could very well be leaning in that direction, and I think that's that message is a good one. But already, along with that, there are messages about loving yourself being of first importance, needing to learn how to love yourself before you can effectively love others, which I think is actually false. Um, and loving yourself even with all your flaws. Well, okay, you can love yourself with your flaws, I guess, or see value in yourself is the way I would prefer to put it, um, even 
amidst your flaws but you know do we just accept our flaws and not want to grow beyond them i don't know it's too early to say what their view on flaws in the role of human existence is um but i think that whole message about loving yourself being of such importance that's where a perspective apart from god has to go it has to make oneself the ultimate authority on right on wrong and on what and who is valuable but that's ultimately subjective and objectively meaningless there's no really grounds for that we're just kind of fooling ourselves or kidding ourselves instead if we do have a creator who is themselves the standard of goodness and perfection and who made us with a purpose in mind we should be concerned actually about whether or not that being loves us and what that being thinks of us Uh, from a biblical perspective god loves and values each person immensely regardless of their talents their skills their achievements and he knows what a complete life for them looks like and wants to guide them in experiencing more and more of that completeness that he that he intends for them to have and so i think our sympathy for the main character here can possibly possibly lead us to reflect on some of that um, but as far as like finding fulfillment in life, you know, the, the emphasis on coupling up and on romantic troubles uh, in this show, I don't think is something we need more of. Uh, we are already wired to conclude that someone is not complete and is living a less than full life if they do not have a romantic partner. That's just kind of how our brains, I think, have been trained by popular culture, by things in entertainment and things outside of entertainment. Even in Christian culture, we can have this mentality of, oh man, if, if my friend doesn't have uh, like a, an, a romantic interest, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, then I need to help them fix their li- I need to f- help fix their life by finding them someone special in that way. But scripture really tells us something different, honoring singleness in a way that we should do as well. It's not that stories about romance are bad, but to see yet one more story about a downtrodden person having no luck in love while also treating the topic in a way that devalues the highest expression of romantic love, the sexual act. Uh, it's just another reminder to me that, that we as Christians would do well to contemplate the biblical views on singleness and learn to effectively love and encourage our single friends or be encouraged if we are single and in that place um, without feeling like we need to fix our friends or be fixed by you know finding romance. Um, all right, no idea what your tastes are in shows, but if I were a time traveler, I'd go back in time and say, Peter, skip this, not your humor. It's a constant reminder of just some really broken perspectives on life that are unfortunately really common today. Uh, I didn't catch a rating for it, but I would, you know, TVMA or R equivalent for language and sexual humor. And those are all my thoughts on Extraordinary Episodes 1 and 2. As always, I'd love to get your thoughts and reactions in the comments below. Please like, share, subscribe. My pizza's probably burning right now. Anything you want to do to help spread this content around, I'd be grateful for. I want to thank the Spirit Blade Insiders for making this review possible. More information about becoming an insider at patreon.com slash spiritbladeproductions. I hope you'll check that out. And of course, I hope you'll check out our podcast and stay connected to all CGC content over at Christian Geek Center com as we continue to geek out and seek the truth was i was i talking too fast my pizza is burning it's surely just like a black little thing right now